Sponsorship for the Cradle Catholic is provided by El Padrecito Productions. Catholic evangelization with an urban flair. El Padrecito Ministries is a nonprofit Catholic organization dedicated to spreading the gospel through the intercession of our Blessed Mother to children, youth, and young adults through the arts, entertainment, media, and education. For more information, visit www.elpadrecito.org. Sponsorship also provided by S Mind Productions. If you're looking for quality music production for your film, your music, your podcast, or whatever the case is, contact my boy Separate Mind at PeteRoseBeats at gmail.com. Time to take you sinners to church now. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, from Music in Focus Studio, where we discuss music, faith, community, and tacos. This is the Cradle Catholic Podcast with your host, C26. Stay tuned, stay tuned, we can learn something. When we barbecue, the only time we burn something. My people with me and we never on our own. When we have a guest on, yeah, it's like we at home. Uh, we talk with bros and with sisters and we all tight. If it's about tacos, then we talking all night. And if I'm honest, I'ma order me some fries. Let's talk about hip hop, talk about life, yeah. It's real, recognize, real, no. Welcome to the Cradle Catholic. I'm your host, C26, and thank you for tuning in. And my guest today is going to share a, a powerful testimony. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of forgiveness. It's a story of triumph in our Lord Jesus Christ. He served 15 years in the Ferguson Maximum Security State Penitentiary here in Texas for a crime to which he admits guilt, right? Uh, so, so in today's discussion, you might hear some things that might be a little shocking, but they are a reality, and it's a reality that's faced by a lot of people in our communities. Uh, so, I just want to welcome my guest today, Rudy Diaz, aka Blessed One. What's up, Rudy? Hey, how we doing? Good. I'm doing fantastic, bro. That's how awesome. are you, man? Hey, I woke up, I'm breathing, so life hey, is good. Man. Gotta give life thanks, good. right? There you go. Hey, bro, it's been, what, maybe four years since the last time we kicked it, bro. Like, right. I was telling Chico, and I was telling him about how we went to California together right. about four years ago. You went with me, Nate G, El Padrecito, and, and Val Morale, I believe, was there as well, right? Right. right. And we, we traveled around to several different cities that weekend, I believe, right? Correct. And we had some... Uh, you went the video shoot for the Lamb of God video, and you made your little cameo appearance in there. Okay. And then we, of course, you know, we had some of those uh, album release parties for the Cristeros album, and you spoke and gave your testimony at a lot of those album release parties, and right. and we performed a song together that we had together too. Yeah, yeah. So that was man. That was that was a great time, bro. That was a great, great, great time. I had fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, truly, um, a blessing. And especially because I got the support from my wife. Yeah. You know, she yeah. was, at the time, was, bang. As, as lo que sea la voluntad de Dios, do God's will. So. I think it was your first time going to California, right? Correct. Never been there. And, man, I fell in love with it. The, hey. the, the ocean, the water, the palm trees. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, for yeah. sure, man. Tacos. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Bro, we had that album release party at that, um, it's called Tamayos. In East LA, East LA, East Los. Hey. Wow! And and I remember it was during Quaresma. It was during Lent. Right, right. And so we had to have the vegetarian enchiladas, bro. Right, the spinach. The yeah. <laughs> and I was at that time. I was looking at Nate like, ooh, Nate got it made, man. You know, because <laughs> Nate's not he, Catholic. He can eat fajita. He can eat <laughs> anything. And I'm like, ugh. But you know what? Man, those were the bomb. Yeah. Those enchiladas were the bomb. Man. They were, bro. They, yeah, they were, bro. I'm blessed to have a a, a Mexican wife. She <laughs> she she feeds me, man. Feeds me. She makes. She tries to keep me from swiping that card and buying stuff at these fast food restaurants. <laughs> yeah, gas stations. And uh, yeah, so your mom's Puerto Rican, right? And your your dad is Mexican, right? My uh, mi mamá, eh, ella de Sabana Grande, Puerto Rico. My mom's uh, 
Puerto Rican. My dad's from Guerrero, Iguala Guerrero. So I have that mix. So did you get like mofongo on one day and tacos on the next or how was that? Hey, lo que sea, gandula, bichuela, uh, oh, 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 <laughs> un, un, un caldo de res, lo que sea. You know, whatever we had, it was a blessing. And, and now my mom, who's boricua, te hace unos sopes, unos chilaquiles, caldo de res. Mi papá, my dad might be listening to some Celia Cruz, Gran Combo. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, I'm blessed they're still alive. Yeah. They're still breathing. Uh, I just went to go see them, you yeah. know, a week yeah. ago. Yeah. They're, they're in Dallas, right? They're in Dallas. They're in Dallas. Born in Chicago. Yes. Raised in? Raised in Dallas. Raised was, in Dallas. Yeah, raised so you in were Dallas. in, in Oldies, Dallas? Oldies, Dallas. Uh, I lived a little bit out there in uh, Oak Cliff, South Oak Cliff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, of course, you know, nowadays you hear... In, in small town Texas, um, yeah, a little bit outside of Austin, right? Yeah. Well, about forty five minutes away from Austin. There you go. There you go. We keep it keep it humble. Hey, you know? that's what's up, man. I want to ask you a little bit about your early childhood growing up. Yes. Um, what was life like at that time for you? It was hard. It was hard. Um, you know, cause uh, with one parent, my dad working. He did. He comes from the construction background. Yeah. You know, but uh, he had an alcohol problem. He didn't want to admit, but I I got to actually see it. We witnessed it. And uh, there would be times where my dad would come home drunk. Um, and we would be scared. When I say we, uh, mother, three siblings, and I got one, you know, I lost my, my brother, David, uh, rest in peace. Mm. But we would actually be scared. So sometimes we would hide under the covers like we were asleep. Yeah. Until, you know, he does his... His show, you know, comes in drunk, hijo ya, despiertense, and you know, it's from Mexico, mm. talking loud, turning on the lights, and we would just play possum, like we're saying, and then he would leave. Of course, his life is not like that no more. Yeah. My mom is still the sweetest one. Uh, she's always giving me a blessing. She always uh, calls. If I don't call, she calls. She knows I have a busy schedule, but at the end of the day, man, uh, it was, it was tough out there in East Dallas, man. It was. Yeah, man. You and I are about the same age. I think you might be a few months older than me. Okay. Right? And and for anybody who's from the area, right, they they know that back then, you know, in the, in the late 80s, the early 90s, you know, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it was popping, bro. Oh, it man. was That Metroplex, that, hey, that, man, it's crazy. That 214, that 817, it's like that in a lot of places oh yeah yeah for sure but it was it was just real easy to get kind of caught up though huh right especially when you're latino yeah you know you come from that background where you see it you see you know you see the fancy rides you see you know low riders over here and then the projects and then you see the drug dealing going on uh and it puts a little pressure on you especially yeah. when your house ain't all that I would be embarrassed to invite people. Not that I didn't want to invite someone. Yeah. I just, you know, we got a, a stolen TV. <laughs> I told my mom I, b I bought it with yeah. dope money. You know, yeah. it's sad. Yeah, it's yeah. sad. And uh, we lived through that. So now you fast forward time. It's like, wow, now I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at some point in time, a certain situation happened, right? that resulted in your incarceration you were probably i want to say about 16 at the time let's talk a little bit about that what happened how did this kind of take place that kind of led up to your incarceration right i was already involved with uh with the the gang the clicas you know uh, whether it be by association or affiliation but i was roaming with them yeah you know and then yeah, it, it became like a journey, you know why? Because there's so there's drama going on at the house with my dad coming home drunk, and I don't want to be around that. So uh, that would be my escape. And then I started participating with the auto theft, uh, uh, stealing stereos, uh, looking for some rent, uh, Dayton's. Then yeah, at the yeah. time, you know, with the Dayton's, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, amplifiers, yeah, whatever, speakers, anything, yeah, yeah, yeah anything, yeah. just to get get some money out of it 
but then at the same time I got involved with the with the drugs. Yeah. I got involved with drug usage, uh, the cocaine, the marijuana, a little bit of drinking, not really too much drinking, but only time I would do the drinking would be like at parties. Yeah. You know, it'd be crazy because you have these parties that like, I don't know whose house this is, but it's like 50 teenagers there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Those, oh, yeah. those moments were like that. Then it's time to come back home. Yeah. And face the music. I actually was helping someone in auto body. Yeah. You know, and I liked it. As in you were working for this person doing like some Yeah, I was auto he had me he had me cleaning up the shop. Okay. But then I really liked the the craft. I'm like, man, this dude's good, you know, yeah, he's yeah. from Mexico and all he wanted to know was English. <laughs> so I was willing to help him for that, but he was actually paying me like, no, oh, he'd take me out to eat and he'll pay me, you know. And I give some, it felt good to give mom money, you know. Yeah, yeah. During that course, I seen the the drugs, you know, the flow, the the trailers, the unloading. Yeah. Uh, I was like, man, you know, I was curious. And I'm Chavalon, you know, this, I'm 15, 14 and a half, 15 growing up, you know, and I'm seeing this and it caught my eye and I was like, man, I, he get some of that money and that became a part of my my day you know it was like hey i'm selling this on the side making money and yeah it felt good you yeah. know especially getting away with it at what point did the offense that we're talking about happen uh now i'm 16 i was just getting out of juvie uh i was in there for auto theft okay and uh yeah i'm about to get out i make a call to my girlfriend's house and her, the mom answers and uh she tells me something that something happened okay so she didn't go in detail you know i was like what and see algo pasó and you know i'm like man so cool i get out i go check you know visiting and uh, finally i get the story that she had been uh raped Wow, so, yeah, so she, she had been raped. Yeah, she had been raped. And I'm um, like, what? And then they said who it was and all that. He's locked up. They got the guy right. And I know this guy. I'm like, what? What happened? Yeah, there was a party going on at this other house. And this guy came over here. And he came in. And, and he shot. He scared her. He shot. He shot. And he yeah. he hit the ceiling. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And and. He raped her and then uh, when she told me the story every time she would tell me the story uh she would just break down she never fully tell me everything you yeah. know she would always break down break down so um words going around in the hood yeah in the barrio something's gonna happen what's up man you know everybody's yeah. getting kind of pumped up but now i'm more like in the little spotlight like the little peer pressure is upon me to, to kind of pressuring you like, to kind of get yeah. your vengeance right what's up man you gonna let that ride or yeah you know yeah. in me within me but i already had that little guy. you were already rebellious oh yeah you already it, wanted it, to get your your, your yeah. revenge yeah so I, them pushing you on you know pushing you forward with that kind of pushed you a it, little too far it took me there and the sad yeah. thing is um uh i did it on my brother's birthday oh wow yeah well that's why this is the mind of a 16 year old at that time i was thinking well okay my intention was to go do that during my brother's birthday right mm -hmm. take care of that get him out the way come back yeah. to the little party you know blend in the piñata or the cake or the music or whatever it may be yeah. and you know and it's just another incident that occurred on the other side of northeast dallas or whatever you know and uh i took my uh, my fall partner with me which is my girlfriend's brother yeah he doesn't know nothing about me taking a gun he thinks we just gonna go over there and rough him up rough him up you know touch yeah. him up be like yeah. you know like yeah, yeah, why yeah. you do this and uh the guy that took me is the guy i used to help at the body shop I, hey, llévame acá. I didn't tell him. Hey, espérame aquí. Ahorita vengo. You know, I'm come right back. He was like, okay, aquí te espero. Yeah. Remember, he knows nothing. He's just, hey. He's just know. giving you a ride. As far Give as he me. knows, he's just doing you a favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got my boy with me. Come on. And he don't know. He just think we finna hide, you know, 
Yeah, Bang. He, he thinks you're just gonna piece up his dude. Yeah, and that's his sister too. So you yeah, know he I'm wants more. to piece him up too. Yeah, I'm repping you. You repping me. So we're gonna yeah. take care of this dude. Right before doing that, uh, I had some soda, had some, mm. you know, had some cocaine, and I took a hit. And he looked at me like, "What's up?" And I gave him some. Getting all pumped up. He goes around the corner. When he goes around the corner, this guy, this guy was already at the door. We had spotted him. We had went around the apartment complex. Mm-hmm. When we went around, we didn't see nothing. We were about to go back home. Because remember, we got a little party going on, right? Yeah. And it just so happens we do another turn. And I see a guy. And he was in a trench coat. Yeah. Then the trench coat with the Dickies, all that. The Ben yeah. Davis. That was in. And, and I told him, that's him. He was. That's him. I, I patted him on the leg. So now... I got to get the driver to like, hey, estacionate aquí. Remember, he's from Mexico. He don't yeah. speak English. Yeah, yeah. Ahorita vengo, voy a hacer algo. Okay, de volada, orale, ahorita vengo. Yeah. And at the door, that's where my, my friend, he approaches him and he starts cussing him out. Why you do that to my sister? Why, you, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that other guy's not saying nothing. I'm around the corner, but I already got this, this gun. I got it, you know, ready, man, you know. And I took another hit uh, of, of soda, of cocaine, and uh, I was already, like, pumped up. So I come around. Now. now he sees two of us. To me, he was reaching in his trench coat. Yeah. The first thing went to my mind is that he's, he's strapped. I know he's strapped because I know him. Yeah. You know, we used to do stuff together, too. Robbing pawn shops, robbing up paletero, man. Sad, you know. But that came back to me. And that's when I pull out the gun. I pull out the gun and and I shot. Uh, I remember I almost hit my partner. Wow. He ducked and he took off running. And I kept shooting and shooting and shooting. And I shot five times. And I went up to him and, and I put the the gun to his face. You know. Yeah. And, and, and in my head, I was gonna unload the whole clip. And I seen a light. There was a like a member of this apartment complex. Yeah, yeah. So by then the shots already got people's attention and the lights go on. And I see the lights. I get scared and I just take off running. You know, I'm, I'm in panic mode, you know. You were paranoid. I was. You were paranoid because you, you knew what you had just done and you didn't want to get caught. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I take off running. Now, because my friend, he's gone and he left me. I'm by myself. I can't find my partner with me, the other one, my girlfriend's brother. So I'm by myself. I'm running around through the whole, maybe a block, running with the gun, you know. Yeah. I see a taxi cab. Yeah. I see a cab. Yeah. I mean, wow. The, when I seen the cab, that was like a halo. I was like, oh, stop right here. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just told him, go that way, right? Yeah. And, uh, you hear the sirens you hear the sirens you hear all the sirens but the thing is i wanted to go back around the neighborhood because i'm looking for my partner yeah you know i didn't want to leave him there you know i'm like where's he at in my head right so i went around and sure enough i seen a guy jogging and that was him Mm -hmm. and we're in the cab and he kept asking he kept asking is he dead is he dead and i looked at yeah just chill man shut up and man, with all the sirens going on, the cab driver's like, man, it's a lot of my, it's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, man, this is crazy out here, man. You know, so we take off. Now we get to a friend's house. When we go inside, my friend goes straight to the TV. He's turning the TV on, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, you know what the hell you doing? He's got the TV on. He's changing it. The channel. It's going to be on the news. Watch. It's going to be on the news. And I'm looking at him. I said, come here, man. Boy, I said, say, man, chill, man. Shut up. Yeah, said, yeah. What's up? Man, listen, miss. Just be quiet, man. Here. I gave him some more soda. And after that, I took, come on, man. Let's go to the house. I'm telling him about my house. We got to walk like 10 minutes. He goes, for what? I show him the gun. He goes, oh. You still got it? Go, yeah, man, I got to get rid of it. It goes through my mind. I said, man, if I get caught, he's going to be the one that's going to tell it. 
That's yeah. just how I looked at it. Yeah. So I already had something like, man, I don't want to do nothing to him. And, and later on, I don't want to think like that, but it crossed my mind. I said, man, he going to end up saying something, you know? Yeah, but yeah, I had to keep him on hush. You yeah. thought he might just... Yeah, so I kept bringing up his sister. I said, man, look, bro, he's the one who gets to your sister. He goes, I know. Well, then chill, man. When we get to the house, I expected some music, uh, happy birthday, because it's my brother's birthday. Yeah, None yeah. of that. No piñata, nothing. None of that. Nothing. It's, I swear, you will approach the house like if there was a funeral. Like, you know what happened? My sister comes out. Okay. She comes out. Rudy, 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 what's up? Rudy, they're looking for you. Who? The cops. What? Man, they say you killed somebody. They say you shot somebody. My fall partner, in that moment, he said it loud. He goes, I told you they're going to get us. When he said it like that, that like automatically, he like, he snitched on the coup. Without well, purposely sister. snitching. Yeah, but he said it. He yeah. said it. I looked at my sister, but she locked eyes with me. She knew I did it. So I go inside the house. My dad right away starts going off. But like a father. Now yeah. he's like, ¿Qué están haciendo? Uh, tu madre aquí sufriendo, buscándolos. And, you know, and then he asked me for the gun. Because he knew something came up with a gun. So I gave him the gun. He put it up. My mom, around the corner, she's in the kitchen. She sees me, and the first thing she did was she just gave me a hug. And then my sister goes, Rudy, 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 there's lights outside. So I look. It's a vehicle out there. So the first thing I thought was the cops. Yeah. So I'm like, man, okay. Find out it was my friend, the one I used to work at, work with, yeah. At the body shop okay. The guy that left me at the apartment yeah. He's outside He's outside now So right there I tell my mom Mama, voy a, estar, voy a estar con mi amigo Pues cuídate mucho And she gave me a blessing She prayed for me She like grabbed me You know, to me I was more like superstitious My mom, she gave me the blessing I wasn't too You know, I knew she spoke about God But I wasn't just in that Camino, you know I wasn't in that path yeah, and uh, my bro tagged along with me, so now we three deep. While we're dry, while he's driving, I'm listening to music, and I look through the mirror, and I see a I see a car following yeah. us, no lights. So I tell, hey man, look through the mirror. I tell him in Spanish, fíjate en el espejo, and he goes, oh, nos están siguiendo, they're following us. Yeah, so he turns. And another, and now it's two cars. Yeah. And something tells me, I look, them ain't regular, like, man, cop cars, them detective cars. Now they hit the side. Rear, rear. I'm like, oh, man. I tell my friend, stop the truck. He don't want to stop. He don't want to stop. And I think, ¿por qué no quieres para la troca? He tells me he has a pound. He has a pound of weed. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> so that's more trouble now. So he finally stops the truck. When he stopped the truck, the cops all out. Now it's three, four cops, lights, everything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then the cop comes up. He's got a Glock. And I tell him, sir, the driver doesn't speak English. He goes, well, he better learn fast. Because <laughs> one of y'all move funny. I'm letting it go. He's going to light you up. Yeah, he's going to light He let me know. So I, I tell him in Spanish. I don't translate it just like that. I tell him. Hey, wait, no hagas nada. Yeah, yeah. Just straight up, just, hey, calmate, no van a matar aquí. So, yeah. You're basically like, he's basically like, what'd he say? You're like, don't move. There you go. Yeah, I just, a different just language. shut up and don't move. Just shut up. It's yeah. Just, act, uh, just, and they're searching the truck. Yeah. There's no gun. They check his truck, license, register, everything was good. They let him go. Hmm. I was happy. I'm like, yeah, man, they finna let me go next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. More cops come and all that, and they got me in a cop car. Man, before you know it, I hear more footsteps coming closer. And remember, they still don't have my real name. They, they're yeah. checking this alias. You know, they, they can't, like, you know. 
and uh they're just trying to verify your identity exactly because i'm the sus i'm the one that looks kind of suspect you know it just so happens here comes another guy and when he opens the door goes bingo he just said it loud and the cop two other go what we got it's him this yeah this rooted boy right here it, that's that's the gang intelligence he knows me off a gang file yeah I'm telling you, this was a gang intelligence officer that ride around in a, in a lowrider regal. Yeah. He'll blend in with a car club. He'll blend in at the at the parks. And it's it's a, it's an officer. And yeah, during inter interrogation, yeah. they put me in a room, then put my uh, my boy in the other one. And in my head, the other one, I'm thinking. Oh man. Remember all the other times he's been saying my name. <laughs> He's he's talking over there. I'm thinking he ain't even gonna have to interrogate. He might just look. I ain't do nothing. It was. I'm thinking like that. Would you believe, man? This guy stuck to his story. The detectives couldn't. They couldn't, couldn't crack get him. him exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, so they sent me to juvenile. I go to juvenile. That's when uh probation officer my ex probation officer comes up to me and he goes Rudy I go yeah he tells me in my ear you know that boy died last night right and I'm like uh, um, man I ain't do nothing no, I ain't say you didn't and I'm just saying he, you know he's dead right so you know it was that and uh, so yeah attempted murder first degree murder and of course you know this is for people who are listening that that don't know the difference between the first degree, second degree, third degree murder. The first degree murder is when it's when it's a premeditated murder. Planned out. Planned out. Yeah, and it's um and it doesn't even necessarily have to be planned out. I mean, it could still be kind of spur of the moment, but you know, it was your intention to kill that person. Um and you had time to kind of consider what you were doing and you carried it out. It didn't have to be planned out for a week or two weeks or a day. It could be planned out in five minutes, but you know, it was premeditated. Exactly, and, and what makes the story a little bit more twisting is when uh, they're they're analyzing my my mind. Some, the, you know, the psychologists they're trying to see uh, how I was thinking at that time. You know, I did it a month after uh, my girlfriend got raped, but I did it on my brother's birthday. You know, so they're well, why would he do it on that day? And and they were actually like, wow, this guy is is he was actually thinking like this, you know? And they, they figured out you were trying to have an alibi. I was at my brother's party. I was I was hitting that piñata. I wasn't <laughs> exactly. I wasn't pulling no triggers. I, exactly. And uh, uh, from juvenile, now I went. I got certified as an adult. Now I'm in the county, and okay. now I'm facing. 55 years so just i want to make sure i got this that straight you went to juvenile correct because i was 16 because you were 16 and then at some point while you're in juvenile they certify you as an adult and they transfer you to the the county jail correct you're looking at a possibility of, of 55 years maximum security of course you know like we said at the beginning of the conversation you ended up serving 15 years. So how did it get reduced from the from the 55 to the 15? I actually had an attorney that came up to me and he told me like this. These are his words, close to him or whatever. He goes, Rudy, Rudy, I got you 55 years. 55 years, okay? I'll go, so what you mean? Like, look, if you sign right now for 55 years, you'll be out. You, man, you still be young. You're you're 17 right now, Rudy. Yeah. You know, that's better than getting a death sentence or, or, or 99. Yeah. Okay, I made up a story that he was racist, a racist against me and something. That's why you guys uh, uh, don't make it far in life because you guys want to sell drugs and get involved with gangs and and then during the conversation he said wet back i said what you say i mean i didn't mean it like that but he said it that was my story so i sold it to the da right so you know what i don't feel comfortable with this one okay yeah 
So they brought in another attorney. Well, I, I see the attorney I get, Hispanic. Mm-hmm. He's got a cross. I can see a little cross on him. I feel good. I feel like, this man, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, there's yeah. a little bit of hope. You know, yeah, a yeah, little bit sure. of hope, maybe a little bit better than 55, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Well, finally, we had a good talk and he straight up told me, well, Rudy, what do you want to hear? Good news or bad news? Uh, what's the good news? The good news is you're alive. OK, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news, you're not going to beat the case. I said, so, so so what you doing? I mean, you you supposed to represent me. He goes, no, I'm going to represent you. I'm going to represent you. But here's the reality. You're Hispanic. They got you on the gang file and the evidence they have against you. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. So I'm like, they don't have a gun. Ain't no witnesses. I didn't do nothing. And I'm sticking with my story. He goes, they have this thing called dying a declaration. Or what? It's called a dying a declaration. It's the last man's dying words. And they have it recorded. While the guy was in the ambulance. When I shot him, he didn't die. Immediately. He didn't die at the door. He didn't die right there in front of us. You see? He was losing a lot of blood. The ambulance came. He died in the ambulance. But before he died in the ambulance, they asked him, uh, they, he, they say his name, and he says his name, who shot you? It was Rudy Boy. Flatline. Flatline. So that right there stuck. And I remember that lawyer, he told me in Spanish, Mira, yo no sé si lo hiciste, no lo hiciste. But yo te tengo de defender. Yeah. I have to I have to I have to represent you. Now I'm gonna have you to take a chance. You're gonna have to take a chance. You have to trust me. You know, he actually wanted me to tell him. You know. He wanted you to to, to admit to admit it. Admit I did it. Now I'm thinking of man, what's gonna happen? Yeah. And uh, that guy left a little Bible, a little pocket Bible. I I, I picked it up. I mm-hmm. started reading, and, and for like the f- one of the first times in my life, I, I I dimmed the lights. I put some newspaper to dim the lights, and uh, I I got on my knees and and you prayed. I prayed. You know, I told God up. Uh, you know what? I've heard about you through my mom. And uh, I think I was cussing about that in the prayer. But well, I messed up. You know, I effed up. Yeah. But uh, uh, I'll sign. I'll sign. I'll plead guilty, God. I just, you know, show me some love. You know, show me some leniency, you know? Yeah, yeah. You'll be merciful, God. Be yeah, merciful. I'll, I'll sign. I'll, I'll sign. Yeah. I'll sign. I don't want to go against that jury, man. Because I'm looking at it more from the other angle. Like, I ain't going to beat it. I, I, not against the jury. Yeah. And then I had to take where I had to take that advice that, that this lawyer just told me. He straight up told me, you ain't going to beat the case. And, uh, yeah. And sure enough, man, a month later, he, he goes, man, I got some news for you, man. What's up? Got you 25. And 25 sounded good now. 25 yeah. sounded like, yeah. Sounded man, better than 55. Yeah. Yeah, so so I'm thinking 25, okay. And sure enough, I tell my parents, I told my mom, finally, I finally fessed up to my mama. Yeah. Told her I did it. Pero tú no lo hiciste, Rudy. Yo lo hice, mamá. Me estás echando mentira. You lying to me. I did it, you know. You say now it's like, and now. But you're like, too much. To para mi no You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm your mama. You ain't do it. Yeah. Just you know. And uh, she was always there. So uh, 
Man, the case kept going and going. And after seven months, that same lawyer, man, he bring me 20. Yeah. From 25 to 20. And uh, I told him, let me make a cute few phone calls. Let me call my parents. Let me call my mother. I call my mom and my dad. Because I'm about to take this 20. Yeah. And then I told him, how much I got to do on that? Well, you're under the quarter law, so you will have to do five years to see parole. And in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, because I'm already accepting. Hey, man, I messed up, yeah. you know? And I'm thinking that little prayer I said, God's already taking care of me, man. Yeah, you went yeah. from 55 to 20. So at this time, you're kind of like, man, I did the crime. I'm, I'm going to do the time. Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, man. Just then. I'm a man up. Go get down there, get swollen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know. And then, uh, yeah. And, and a month later, he goes, well, I'll see you. I'll see you in a month. But he, he, he told me, he, I remember him giving me some advice, like spiritual advice. Este, mira, yo no más te estoy defendiendo. Ahora, yo no sé cómo está tu corazón. I don't know how your heart is con Dios. Yeah. Pero, acércate. You know, get like, close, like, to, get close to him. Yeah, get, to me, that was like nonsense. I'm like, I don't want to hear that right now. Pero a part of me did. You know, like, I, you're right. You know, in my head, I just didn't want to tell him he's right. Yeah. You know, and uh, sure enough, the month comes around the corner. I'm about to sign. Yeah. My mind is made up. I'm taking the 20. He goes, I guess I'm better than you. Yeah. I'm going home. He goes, nah, 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 nah. nah. Not that good. Not that, Not that good. Mira. Hablé, hablé con los, hablé con el juez, hablé con el DA. Si ahorita, si ahorita firmas. If you sign right now. He gives you 15. One five. One five. I looked at him and, and I, I like cried. I, I cried like in a sense of like relief and more like, like sending him up. Don't play, you, you for real? Yeah, yeah. Mira. Ahorita, si tú firmas, yo te estoy garantizando, son 15 años, son 15. So my mom and dad, I was going to sign, and my dad is like, pero, pero, ¿por qué vas a firmar? I told him, I did it. Yo lo hice, pa, yo lo hice. Ay, mi mamá, ay, Rudy, pero mira, bueno, 15 años, pero te, por, te tienes de portar bien. Y si vos vas a padre, pues pórtate yeah. bien. Y, so basically, like, behave educa, yourself. Educate, yeah. you know, something, right? And uh, now I'm facing the judge. I still remember his name, the judge. So the judge tells him, so, oh, so you're, you're pleading, you're pleading at, at admission of guilt. So he wants to record me to say that I killed them. He wants me to say it like that. He wants to get your admission on, he wants to get your admission recorded. Yes. While I kept going back and forth, I keep telling my lawyer, mm -hmm. I'm pleading guilty. I'm pleading guilty. Okay, so right when it was time to sign, I noticed there's a lady in there. There's a lady with a little girl. I don't know who they are. You know, but the lady's holding her daughter, like, you know, like a five-year-old daughter, like holding her. And I looked, and, uh, and then I looked to the right, and I see my mom and dad. And I look, and right when it was time to sign, yeah. that pen... Man, I swear, I, it, it felt like I was holding uh, a brick. It, it was heavy. My, my it was. I was sweating, and I picked up that pen and I, I couldn't even do my signature, man. And, and finally, I signed. They took me away. I, do you think, in a sense, you you almost wanted to kind of like uh, pay I, a consequence for what you had done? Thank maybe. you. Maybe. Deep down inside. You know, I'm glad you asked that um, because I've done so much other stuff that I didn't get caught for. So I feel like 15 years oh, is is like enough where that makes up for this. It was right. It was right. You yeah. know, that's crazy to hear someone say that that was right. And I did it. No, because I did it, I was supposed to get incarcerated. 
so so now we're we're at the point now so you've you've yeah. just gotten your sentence you've gotten right. your 15 year sentence and they transfer you now from the county jail to the penitentiary yeah and and, and you know you gotta get ready for the for that quota check you mean i'm oh, a, yeah, yeah yeah and it's coming it's yeah. coming no matter how big, how small, what's, what what oh, yeah. age you got that so, coming. They want to look at you, yeah. You know, there's some people listening that don't know what a Cora check is, oh, right? Okay, Cora, short for Corazon. You got a heart check. They, they yeah. want to see if they how you see what you made of. Yeah, they how you They want to see what react? you made of. They want to test you. Yeah. They want to see if you're down. Yeah. They want to see if you're going to hold your own. Yeah, correct, correct. You know, that's what a Cora check is, right? The sad part about it is if you don't show them what you made out of, boom. You're worse off than if you just go ahead and just get down. Exactly, if you, exactly. If you, you either fight, or if you don't fight, you know, if you, if you don't show no heart, yeah. then you can get treated bad. Right. And then the decision make comes on you. You know, you got prison gangs. You got you got all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it's in there. It's in there, you know. Now, you mentioned uh, the different prison gangs that were there. Yeah. And you yourself eventually joined one of the prison gangs and we don't have to say names or anything right now right. but did you feel pressured into it or was it like hey man i gotta do this for my survival or what was the kind of your mindset kind of joining a prison gang no nah, you know what when i got there i didn't even look at these guys as gang members i looked at them as a, as homies so of course you, you had probably your, your ups and your downs i imagine i did some days are better than others sure and about a year and a half, maybe almost two years after you were incarcerated, you had one of your, your bad days when you uh, were approached by the chaplain. Yes. Um, so I put the little mirror out there and I see a chaplain. Man, I said, oh, oh chaplain on two row, y'all. Sure enough, that chaplain comes straight to my cell. I go, yeah, he goes get dressed. And uh, right when I got dressed, I go, man, chaplain. And my inmate, the fellow inmate, uh, cellmate, cellmate uh, he told me, be strong, Rudy. So they he, take me. He kind of knew what was going on. Right. He might not have known the details, but he knew it was something serious. Exactly. So I get down there. I'm in the room. And while I'm in the room, uh, the cha- it's the chaplain and another guy. Uh, supervisor he's also involved with the ministry or whatever uh he tells me uh close the door and uh i close the door i just he told me to sit down but i didn't want to sit down i just now i i don't feel right he goes you know in life we go through stages we go through phases i looked at him like well, well, what's up you know I, what's up what, what happened what's up why are you telling me all this he goes, uh, last night, um, you, you, you had a death in your family. Last night, your, your brother died in a car wreck. Your brother David died in a car wreck. And I'm like, what? And I broke down. And, uh, and no, I got mad. I cut. I don't know what. But well, that same day, going back to the block. Man, I'm already, I waited, I'm sad. You know, I'm broke down. I didn't even go to lunch. And they got fried chicken. <laughs> bro, when you have fried chicken in prison, you go eat. Bro, that's like Christmas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like pozole on Christmas. I'm that's like, telling you, man. I didn't even like tamales and I didn't even go. It was just crazy, man. I lost my brother and uh So you were about 18 when this happened, huh? Yeah. About 18. Yeah, I was 18. I was 18. And it gonna... happened in 94, 1994, man. Wow. Yeah, I got locked up in 92. Yeah. Now, at some point in time, you know, I'm going to fast forward a little okay. bit, right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of war stories. I'm sure there's a lot of gory details we could get into, but we don't need to get into all that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to fast forward a little bit, man. At some point in time, um, you start reading some literature from some, I guess, well-meaning, but maybe misinformed, you know, <laughs> Protestant, you know, brothers. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, passing around these Jack Chick tracks, right? Man, uh, tell for me people about people who it. don't know what Jack Chick tracks are, those are almost like comics in a sense, right? Like comic books kind of? Yeah. And they're very, they just paint the Catholic Church and anything 
having to do with the Catholic Church in a very, very bad light, to say the least, right? That's that's kind of an understatement. Correct. You know, they, uh, I mean, all kinds of accusations and crazy things about the church. And and they're designed, I think, you know, to, to lead Catholics out of the Catholic Church. Right. Right. How'd you get your hands on those? Uh, there were times where we go through the lockdowns, you know, where there, uh, there's a riot, something happens, they lock you down. So now you're a 30-day lockdown or a 45-day lockdown. Yeah. So sometimes we will have people that visit us, outside visitors, mm-hmm. you know, from different churches, different, and uh, nice people. They're, they're, they're real yeah, friendly. Yeah, no, they, they mean well. It's good to have someone come visit you. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter. What skin color, what religion, man, if someone comes visit you, that's a blessing, you know. Yeah, yeah, so anyways, sure. they passing out these books. The eye catcher is, it's in a comic style and the, the design like is, so you're really going to read it. Yeah, yeah. And I just so happen to have, read the whole collection of the <laughs> chick publishing books and they painted the Catholic church like wicked, like evil, like man. So there was a time where I remember getting a visit. Uh, my mom, she visited me and uh, she came with my sister and I seen a rosary. Yeah. I seen a rosary and I was actually telling my mom, throw it away. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Like, you know, I'm trying to tell her detail. No, mom, that's... Uh, that's idolatry. That's, yeah, yeah. That's that's vain prayer. That's exactly all the different things that these that's man made. Exactly. I'm rolling with that, and I it got to a point. I was actually saying, if you bring that rosary again, I'm canceling the visit. Wow. That's how mad I got, you know. But yeah, there was a time where uh, I actually had words with my mom because she had a rosary, you know, and yeah. yeah. So, I guess on the bright side, right? At least it's got your mind thinking about, you know, things that are holy, things of God, things of of the faith, right? Yeah, it's, so I had to do something with myself. So not only would I get more involved with the reading, uh, I was educating myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took up some courses. I got my GED. I got, a, I got my associates, you know, in business. Nice. Uh, in there, I got a trade uh, auto body uh, really I just got into these trades so I would be I'd be out of the fields <laughs> so basically you, you, you wanted to get out of that cell yeah, so anything that. you could do to get out the cell for a little while boom yeah. and that included church yeah sometimes they would call they call church that I've been a tiling service that's that's for Muslims yeah you know, tiling service hey let's go man we're going <laughs> <laughs> just to get out hey. you know they call church regular church everybody going but they have a capacity you know mm-hmm. a lot of times we just go down to the traffic and trade hey hey you got some cigarettes hurry up you know give me this give me that yeah. you know but then it just so happens one day I remember C block y'all get ready for church I'm like okay and uh I put some in the wind you know I roll something up like hey I told my seller hey get the, watch the run so I rolled something up um, I hit it a couple of times and I gave him the rest. He goes, You sure? Yeah, that's for you. I took some Jolly Ranchers and boom. And I go down to the church. They got the coro, the, the church choir going. Yeah. But I didn't come for this. Yeah. I'm trying to be in this AC and I might eat twice. So it was church. So I went down there chilling with the homies and all that. And it just so happens that the speaker we having. You know, he's, he's, uh, yeah, you could tell he's a little stocky and all that. All right. Okay. I'm listening to him, but everything he spoke was about God's love, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, you know, and, uh, and in my head, I'm judging him. Yeah. Eh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, he responds, he goes, and there's going to be a lot of people that don't like me preaching about the word of God, but I'm here to tell you that. Jesus' love is perpetual. It's everlasting. It's it's. So I questioned him. To me, I said, "Man, you don't know nothing about prison. You know, you yeah. sound good because you you're speaking. You're on that side, and I think that was his wife. His wife, attractive, pretty. You know, man. He right away says, and if a lot of guys don't know, now you about to know. 
I was also in prison for nine years. Mm-hmm. You know, he had been out like seven years. Okay. He started his own little business, and he has a smile. It radiates like, and yeah, okay. So now I can I can relate with this guy, you know, and he, and the words that he was dishing out were just beautiful it was like i could tell it from the heart it wasn't staged i'm like man this dude yeah he and was then, genuine man and the coro you know just charismatic uh you can feel the vibe like we are gonna see the king i was also singing the song where I'm like yeah man i'm feeling good but my time's running out you know like oh and then there's that moment where he says uh and there's a time in life where you got to make a decision you know and and I was already, uh oh, here comes that question. If you really want change in your life, I need you to stand up. Yeah. So, in my head, I'm like, man, you got me messed up. I ain't finna stand up. You know, I can't stand up now. Yeah. I'm too caught up with the homies. I'm too caught up with these dudes. I, they're gonna look at me as weak. Yeah, yeah. You know? You're so, thinking, I'm gonna put a target on my back. If I yes, stand up Exactly That's what I thought Yeah I Listen get you. So when I'm thinking that Guess what he says And don't worry about your friends Right next to you Cause come judgment day They're not gonna be there It's just gonna be you Before the be, And I'm like This dude's like Actually You're Like reading my mind Yeah Yeah Straight up I was like man And then I'm thinking Is it the The herb Or what <laughs> <laughs> He goes, but I ask you one thing. He goes, you probably have parents out there for some of you guys that still have family. Yeah. Every now and then they send you a little something for your commissary. Some don't have that. Mm-hmm. Some will probably still be here for the next 10, 15 years. Some will probably never get out. But then there's some in here they probably will have an opportunity to one day be out there in society mm. now there's gonna be a time if you keep doing what you're doing you're gonna keep getting the same results there's gonna be a time when you're gonna have to break up a chain you're gonna need change if you want to get close to Christ if you really want a change of direction you want to start new no matter what kind of case, no matter what you're in it for, it could be murder, it could be rape, it could be robbery. Stand up. Yeah. And um, oh man, I contemplated. The first thing came to my mind. Man, when I'm in God, these guys gonna jump me when I get back to you know. Yeah. And uh, nobody got up. Everybody, I'm thinking we're gonna stay like this for five more minutes and we're going I'm trying to get out of there. Cause I'm thinking that church service is gonna be over with. Yeah. I got up. You stood up. I got up. Yeah. There was a guy, he, he like tried to like what are you tripping? Yeah, like he tried to be like, like hey sit down, bro, sit down. Tripping. I bowled him. I like ah, man. <laughs> you know, I was already accepting, you know what, well, whatever come with it, man. Yeah. You know, y'all gonna jump me, y'all gonna stab me. This dude had a smile. This dude had been locked up. This guy here is married to that lady. And she's beautiful and he's happy. Yeah. So if he's happy, she's smiling and they're really? doing work for the Lord. Yeah, like she's pretty, prettier than y'all knuckleheads. Yeah, and right. he started his own small business. Yeah. He's got his own little, he's got his life. Right? And he's, man, I want some of that. Yeah. I got up, man. Yeah. When I get up, of course, I had a guy try to tote me. Like, man, you know, man shut up, man. I, st- I think I cussed him. I mean, shut up. Or something. Yeah. Well, I told him, man, it's whatever, man. Yeah. I had that attitude. Yeah. I got up there. He, he gave me a hug, man. Dude gave me a hug, and I felt it. I felt it. There were some people that looked. He looked at me. He goes, let me ask you something, Rudy. He turned to the right. He turned to the left. He goes, are you high? But he, he didn't say it loud. He, and I looked at him and I go, yeah. He goes, it's okay. I used to do the same thing. He gave me a hug, right? Yeah. So in that moment, 
guess what I see now? What's that? That same dude that was, he got up. Like, like oh, little, the guy that was nudging you, telling you not to stand up. He got up. Now he's standing up. Now you got like three other guys getting up on, on the, it, it like seven. It just, they needed that domino, like that first domino, like you yeah. go in and we going to follow. I swear, man, at that, well, the same, the same, you know, like seven of us got saved that day. Yeah. You, yeah. Right. And uh, some of y'all answered that, that altar call, I guess. You said, yeah. Right? The, the altar call. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and honestly. I felt something. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I I felt something. For sure, for sure. I felt something, and it was beautiful. And uh, yeah. And it was genuine. Yeah. It was real. Yeah. See, it was planted, and it was a genuine experience. And you know, whether or not you you realize it at that moment, God was moving in your life. The Holy Spirit was moving in your life, and He's calling you to something yeah. greater, yeah. calling you to redemption. Exactly. All right, everybody, we're taking a quick break to shout out to the sponsors, El Padrecito Productions, Separate Mind Productions, Reach Architect. Thank you for support, and thank you for making this program possible. Let's get back to the business. Sometime later, you get to the point where you've been in, in, in the cell for 15 years now. Mm. You've been in, in jail for 15 years now, in prison, and, and you get released. I remember that day you still all say... Yeah, I came November 30, 2007. Hey. Yeah. Uh, they give you a check. Yeah. Yay, 15 years. He goes $100. Well, oh, here's $200 for you. Yeah. That's that's your gift. And a bus ticket, Greyhound, mm -hmm. and whatever you got on your account. Trust fund. That's what they give you. I'm ready for this bus. I'm finna get on this Greyhound bus. He goes, oh, yeah, and if you have family... They'll be on the other side. When I get out, that sun just beaming like, mm, it's hitting me. And I turn left. When I turn left, I hear a voice. Ahí está. He's there. I don't pay no mind because nah, somebody come to get somebody else, right? Yeah. And I'm walking. And uh, I hear it. Rodolfo. Hey. Hey, my mama. That's your mom, man. <laughs> Tell me, mama. My yeah. mother. That's the love of a mother right there, man. Yeah, she, she was there. By your side, man. I swear she was there. The kids, they, that crossed that street, they gang tackle me. They like, uh, my dad goes, hijo, ya saliste, ya le hicimos. He gave me a hug. He's from Mexico, pero that, that, like, Chispirito came out of him. Yeah. Ya le hicimos, ya. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, my mom, I, she first thing was, ay, Dios mío, she just grabbed me so hard. And uh, my sister, <laughs> my sister cussed. Uh, <laughs> she, she, let's get the out of here, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they got me in the vehicle, and uh, we get to a Mexican restaurant. Man, I got to share this story, man. I know you're on time. I got to share it. Good, we get yeah. to the restaurant, and, you know, he, he, I mean, what's the first thing you eat at a Mexican restaurant? Tacos, bro. The first burritos, <laughs> chalada, no. chips and salsa. Boom. Okay, the chips, chips and, salsa. and the salsa. The chips and the salsa. So they bring the salsa and the chips, and boom, and there I go. And I'm, bro. I ate so many chips that my jaw, <laughs> my miquijada, mira, yeah. aquí, it, it was hurting me. But I kept eating, eating, and then my sister like, Rudy, Rudy, the food's gonna come out. So I looked at her. What's up? She sees that I'm, I'm I'm on my second basket of chips. <laughs> I looked at her basket. You ain't gonna eat. She's like, and my other sister looking at her like, déjalo, leave him alone. He's you know. Yeah. So all right. So here comes the food. Say man, man, like seven different styles of plates. Like you had you had the sizzling fajitas over here. That you had the romano right here. You had the enchiladas over here. My mom wanted. Uh, un caldo uh, de, de camarón I, I, I didn't know where to start I'm yeah. like I'm just looking at, I'm salivating I'm like <laughs> You know I'm, I'm salivating right now say, Just hearing oh, about we're it finna, we're not, I got you I'm, I'm finna take you out somewhere Say <laughs> And we're eating My sister goes uh, Rudy Can you lead us into prayer So I'm like all right, yeah, yeah. So I start off a prayer, but you know, one of them like, God is good, God is great, God is good, you know, like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Then my sister just took over. 
Ajá. Y no, she just, Padre bueno, Padre celestial, te damos gracias por este día, por este milagro que has hecho en nuestras vidas. She just, I'm like, I'm looking at her, I'm like, I'm, you know, yeah. rolling with it. Yeah, okay, it, holy roller. Eh, how you, <laughs> yeah, how you learn all that? And she just, church, baby, we got Jesus. Okay, then we started eating and eating, and uh. Damn, yeah, man, I, that moment was like, wow, they loaded me up with so much food. I was like, yeah, yeah no, no. Yeah, but God is good. That, that was the day I got out. So let me ask you this here now. Yeah. So now you're, you're out. Thank Where, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, no, thank God. God for sure. You're, yes. free, you're free, man. Yes. Uh, you're not on parole. No, discharge. You, 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 you discharge, right? So Yeah, I discharged my whole sentence, 15-year sentence. And then... Where, where are you at now with your faith, man? Had, you, had your faith continued to grow at this time? Here's the thing. I have, when I get out, uh, I wanted to do more research. Okay. I had wanted to do more research. And I had an incident where my sister had some people come over and one of them happened to be a priest. Okay. And so I'm like, man. So I'm trying to memorize all these scriptures that I remember like, okay, I'm going to ask him this just in case, just in case he gets to tripping or, or, or uh, get to talking, you know. You're kind of building up your arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I got arsenal, enough arsenal. And then he's a priest, so I'm like, I, I ain't going to call him father. Yeah. You know, because, you know, it's a scripture, you yeah, know. You, you yeah, yeah, don't like call, no man, call no man father. father and... Exactly. I'm okay. going to the uh, the gospel of Mark, right? Like, okay, I'm going to get him, bam, with this and that. And uh, I refer to the priest as hermano. Instead of padre. Exactly. And uh, he, he, the way he responded, humble, nice. And remember, he's a charismatic priest. So I'm, I thought he was going to start screaming. No, none of that. None of that. He showed me scripture, but then he was showing me more teachings of the church. You know, okay. So then I had another question about the rosary. Where did the sign of the cross? Where is the sign? I kept trying to direct everything to the church, to the bible where in the bible does it have the sign of the cross where in the bible does it say this you know i was trying to why i i gotta the pope is this and you know he answered everything with respect but he woke me up he woke me up he gave me a he gave me tips where by myself when i think i excused myself to go to the restroom yeah And the real reason why I went to the restroom just to throw water on my face and I just looked in the mirror, I'm like, man, I need a, I need to study more. I need to read more. I need to do more research. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, because all this time I've been looking at the Catholic Church like evil, wicked. And I find out all my family really is Catholic, you know? Yeah. Either they're all wrong Oh, something, 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 and I'm speaking up on it. Yeah. And uh, theology classes. Um, okay. Met a couple of deacons, friends that you could actually, man, let me ask you something, man. How do you, you know, view this? What do you think? Research, research, research. Lots I wanted to get more involved, and yes, the prayer never stopped. Yeah. And I had support. Mm -hmm. And I had support. So I started going more to the retiros, grupos de oración, uh, more involved with mass. But I would also get invited to prayer group with Protestant brothers. Yeah. You know, so I would go. They take me. I'm, I'd be inside homes, you know, nice homes. And I'm like, wow. And one day I recall, uh, went to this place. And it was like 13 or 14 of us. To like Bible study yeah. But the guy that invited me He had heard of me coming out of prison So he wanted to use me like Man I want you guys to meet this one guy and Me talking about me And, I, and they treated me good They were nice Yeah. Right before prayer group They asked me if I could open up a prayer So sure Yeah So I did the sign of the cross mm -hmm. And when I did the sign of the cross I, I did a prayer And everything was good. And then there's this one guy. He goes, what, what, what was that? What you just do? So what's up? That, that, what was that? Oh, that's that a, movement. That yeah, hand I said, just. That's, yeah, that's the sign of the cross. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He told me, we don't do that here. 
I I felt like like he he uh like he touched something like 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 he like, like he, he took just, a jab yeah like yeah. he took a jab at you yeah he did to to me I took it like that you know like okay well this this is me this is what I am. You know, and we follow. We 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 finished up the Bible study, and then kept it respectful. He, kept it respectful. It, yeah. They even brought food out there. I think I snacked on something, but I now in my now I'm not. You know, kind of not feeling it no more. Nah, I'm not. I'm not. So now I had questions. I got a lot of questions, and I remember one day going to the church, and uh, and I see it. The keys. Mm-hmm. And Matthew 16, you know, 19, you know, yeah. when, when Jesus, you know, on Peter, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's that mean? I, I just took it and ran with it. And I wanted to go back in scripture, but now I have a Bible that was given to me from one of the guys in prison. And, and I, I, I went back to translation. I went back to this one. Oh, okay. So this is the beginning. So Peter is the okay. Now I'm putting it together. And if you follow the chain, 263 popes, 264 popes down the line, we get to a recent one that we have. So our, our history, if I could sum it up in two words, historical continuity. Yeah, historical continuity. That was no. That's real bro The, the that's church real. The church hasn't fallen No Have we been banged up Beat I think we said it before Yeah And if there's a perfect church Where is that If and, there's a perfect church And you better not enter it I'd mess it up As soon as I walked in <laughs> You gonna mess it up Yeah Yeah no exactly more. Exactly yeah. Exactly So at some point You get involved in speaking At different retreats the different um, events, whatever, right? Right. And you had an encounter with a person from your past. Okay. So I had an incident with the priest. Remember the the, the priest that he told me, "Oye, tú, tú tienes un fuerte testimonio. You you have something for holiness. You have something to give back for the holiness." And I've always been that type that I want to interact with teenagers, yeah. especially with. Knuckleheads. Exactly. So when I see a 15, 16, 17 year old, I think back of that 16 year old that Rudy. made a that made a decision, a wrong decision, and it led me to that. Yeah. Where I gotta talk about the love of God. I gotta talk about Jesus. I have to, man. Yeah. Why? Because I'm blessed. I'm I'm fortunate. I have a new life. You know, my saint, no. My perf, no. You've, you know, continued working in the different, you know, ministries and, and speaking at different retreats and stuff. Now you, you have an, an encounter. I was invited to a retreat. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'll go help. Mm -hmm. Well, here they're asking me if puedo dar testimonio. They want you to give a testimony. Testimony. I'm like, uh, I'm open for it. Uh, pues para Dios yo le voy a dar sí. So I get invited. So now I'm giving my testimony. All right, cool. Boom. So when I went up there, I kind of like apologize because if if I like speak Spanglish and it just so happens a lot of teenagers they're like, no, do it like that. Yeah. Well, they can relate with you. So, yeah. Yeah. So that happens. I'm get I'm sweating. You know I'm sweating because we're gonna have the blessed sacrament. We're gonna have the the Eucharist. Yeah. It's, it's gonna ooh, it's gonna be man so I'm speaking and, and then I'm, I'm I'm zoned in I'm I'm, I'm, I'm journeying I'm, I'm navigating the testimony when I finish I don't know if I ate up 35 or 40 minutes cause I had the guy in the back telling me yeah he's telling you yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah like, Time like, like shut up really? shut it down like, shut it down but I still got so much to say and, and, you know yeah. but then my friend kinda like went to him Leave him alone. Yeah, let him talk. Let, let him do his him, thing. Yeah, just get out the way. 
so it felt good so when I finished oh my god the response I got they you had moms crying and, and I felt it but right when I'm leaving uh there's this lady she approaches me all right she approaches me she goes Rudy I go see sí. puedo hablar contigo can I talk and uh, yeah okay so to me she's a servidora she she's a a lady that works in the ministry or the she was one of the organizers right yeah, yeah. so she put me to the side he goes este buen trabajo she did like oh she good job yeah good job. I like thank you it's then I go para Dios tengo una pregunta and I have a question and she she said uh, do you know she gave a name she gave the last name you know I, I automatically got chills like you know when you get chills escalofrío yeah and they throw that get whoa like yeah. I got one of those it was one of those moments and you know she, she said the name but I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the lady you know like man where I know you from I can't anyways and I go yeah si, si, si lo conozco you know, she said, now the first name, last name is all out there, right? Yeah. And I looked at her. And that's when she said, this is, this is mi hijo. Yeah, she looked at That's my son. Yeah. The, the lady there. What, the lady there that was at the retreat. With the same lady. When I was writing my sentence. When I was pleading guilty 15 years. When I pled guilty, there was a lady and a girl yeah. in that room. And on the other side, my mom and dad were there when I yeah. pled guilty. That was her. And now I'm in front of her. So I looked at her and I broke down. And I looked at her and I said, I just backed that. I said, I'm sorry. And she goes, Ben. I'm like right here. She goes, Ben. She with her finger point like, come here. And I got closer and uh, and you know, at that time, reality hit me. He said, you know, if she spits in my face or she slaps me, I deserve it. And uh she goes back. And I got close and I, I I waited for that slap. Like, you know, I but I'm in a retreat. And she gave me a hug. Wow. She gave me a hug. She hugged you. Yeah, she gave me a hug. And I swear, that hug, man, that hug she gave me. And that hug my mom gave me when I got out of prison. Ooh, man, they were battling. <laughs> there was there was like a, a tug of war and hugging. My mom hugged when I got out of prison. And that a hug from this lady here that, that I, I I killed her son. Yeah. And she forgave me. She forgave she me. She told me, mira, siéntate. She told me, siéntate. And the way she says, siéntate. She sounded like my mom. She goes, siéntate. Yeah. I was going to like, hey, man, you, I got you. I'm sit down. I said, me siente. And I looked at her. And just soaking, man. And we talked. And she told me, mira, this is the mom. Como una madre. Like, mom, duele. Duele. It hurts. Duele mucho. Especialmente como lo perdí Just like the way I lost them Si sí, duele mucho Pero yo le doy gracias a Dios I, I, I give thanks God Because he's doing something with you Está haciendo algo contigo Él está haciendo algo contigo Tú sigue ese camino You stay in that path And Yeah and that right there was my moment of like, eh. you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, it, 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 it got me. It's powerful, man. So it's powerful. Okay, so there was a time where you know my mom with people, she would tell me, "No digas nada. Tú no le tienes de contar nada, nada de tu vida a nadie. You don't have to share nothing with nobody." Pero now it's for the kingdom of God. Now it's like, no, mom, it's for God's 
glory. It's for his honor. It, it's for him. It's for the kingdom. It's for these teenagers. It's for, you know. It. And what do, you, what do you think it is that you want people to get out of it when you share the story? You want know, the message of redemption? Message of forgiveness? Of course. What, what of it? course. I mean. God's transformed your life, right? God's, you're, you're in, in a much better place than you were at 16. Right, you you I mentioned think, earlier that you you're married now. You've been married now for seven years, right? Uh, July six, si Dios permite, if God permits it, it will be seven, seven years. Seven years. You've got two children, two beautiful, yes, wonderful and, uh, children. Uh, David, I named them after my brother. He's mm -hmm. five. Daniela, okay. Daniela, she's three, and I don't know, maybe. Another one on the way. We'll see. We, hey. we, don't, know, we don't know. That's it. Hey. That's it. That and now, of course, you know, you, we, uh, you're, you're a homeowner. You've got a brand new home. Well, not brand new, but you mean three, you've been here for three, three years now? Uh, been here three years. Uh, we've done a little remodeling. My wife always changing out the colors, the kids, the, the, <laughs> this yeah. patio. You yeah. know, it's like, okay, it's for the it's for us. Yeah. Like, sure, we just, you know, allá atrás. Yeah. And yeah. You're, you're also a business owner now. You own your yes. own small business, right? I own. A, I'm a small business owner. I own my own um, glass business, uh, Elite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the name of it. I do shower installs, uh, frame, frameless, window replacement. Man, but when I met you, bro, it was like 2010. We, 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 it was a like while back, 10 right? years ago, bro. Yeah. And we did a song together, man, at that okay. time, dude. You remember, man? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I still remember the day we recorded it, bro, because we went to... We met up at Lay's it was apartment. In, you it remember was in Lay? Austin? Yeah, in Austin. Yeah, Lay. For people who don't know, man, was one of the original members of my group, Foundation. Ah, uh. and so this is like this like ten years ago, we recorded a song together. You wow. and me. Wow, it's yeah. called uh, "Good News." Good news. Yeah, good the good news. news. Yeah, because we not... wrote it on the spot. We were on. We the spot. picked out the beat on the spot. We wrote it on the spot, and we recorded it on the spot. We're gonna play this song right now, right. man. Good news, man. And uh, when we come back, we're gonna do a little Q and A. Sure. i 
So there you have it, everybody. That was me and my boy Rudy, aka Blessed One. Good news. And man, you got a lot of people asking questions, man. So I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. And we're going to start off with a, a question from Victoria Rocha. She's from Des Moines, Iowa. Her question is pretty simple. It just says, what would you tell the youth of today who are faced with a similar situation? Listen to your parents. Listen to your parents. I get it. Every household is different, but mom and dad, mom and dad know the game. They, 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 they know what's going on. You know, they know what's going on. They've been through a lot. So that's the best advice you can get is from mom and dad. We mess up a lot of times because we go outside the box, you know, and then we're dealing with knuckleheads and you know, it sounds good when yeah. other people give you the answers, but like mom and dad, hey man. And the truth of the matter is that mom and dad are looking out for your best interest. Exactly. When other people aren't necessarily looking out for your best interest. There you go. Uh, the next question is coming from Gigi Gonzalez. And she is okay. in Westfield, Massachusetts. Okay. Right? And she asked a question. She says, how did the forgiveness of a mother change your life I didn't see it coming but when it happened it sent a message a piercing message in my heart that said hey wow she forgave me that's the mama and I have a mama and you know what I have to change I have to stay doing right you know so for that one reason that mom right there touched my heart being that she was Christian, it made sense. I'm like, man, this mama's been through a lot, been through a lot. And you know what? I made her suffer. But there was a time where she gave me that hug and she looked at me and she said, keep doing what you're doing. And she smiled. So to transform that into a smile, that right there impacted my life. The next question we got, you met this dude right here, man. Okay. It's a little homie, Chris. If you remember Chris, we met him in L.A. Chris, Chris. Yeah, he was at the at the album release party in L.A. Chris Pettis. Chris, uh, uh, from uh, Long Beach? He's from Glendale. Glendale. Glendale, California, he, yeah. He had, he's in the video? He's in yeah, the video. yeah. <laughs> hey, I love that that's boy. That's the homie right there, bro. I love him, man. Hey, that's the yeah, homie. Yeah, he's contagious. For real, bro. For he real, is. he is, That's man. what we need more of. People that, they're, they're normal people the day-to-day working but you know what you can see the hat and from a distance you can say ah he looks like a cholo he's a pan. but huh when you get to sitting down talking about guess what the god's love jesus he's got it he's got so we need more of that hey, we need more of that. What's up. Yeah. and chris asked the following question he says how about any new music are you gonna work in any new music I love to. I love to. I love to do more music, especially Catholic Christian rap. If it's for God's kingdom and it could touch a heart and bring a smile, I'm with it. I'm with it. That's what's up. Yeah, I'm a little rusty, but hey, yeah, I can put something. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, maybe, maybe we'll knock out that good news part two. Oh, uh, hey, great the news. The remix. The remix. That'd right? be nice. Yeah. Be nice. Maybe get a little Chris on there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Hey, so the next question is coming from David Tito Rosas. David and he Tito is in Rosas. Lynn, Massachusetts. Okay. Okay. And he asks, it's a two part question. Come on. He asks, what scripture touches your heart? And who's your favorite saint? So many, so many. Pues me voy a ir con uh, San Pablo. I'm going to go with um, St. Paul when he, uh, he addresses the community and says, the words 
todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. Philippians 4.13. Yes. Uh, uh, Filipenses 4.13. Can you translate that? I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Hey, yeah. that's what's up, man. Yes. And your favorite saint? My, uh, that's another one. Um, Padre Pio. Okay. Yeah, very, very devoted. I like how he took charge and, and, and when he was going through the suffering with the stigmas, uh, how he still tried to cover them. That meant a lot to me. All right, all right. The next question comes from Robert Maje, and he is in Aztec, New Mexico. I've been to Aztec. Have you? Yeah. Nice, nice. And he's asking here, when the faith was being shared to you from our Protestant brothers, and sisters, what did they say or do that appealed to you and made you want to listen to the good news? The way it was shared to me, it was shared to Protestant brothers that meant good, that had good intentions. And genuinely cared. Yeah, and gen- Yes, yes. I love my Protestant brothers. Yes, yeah. I do. I love them. Yeah. I love them. You know, I have nothing against them. Hey, at the end of the day, they're my Christian brothers. They're my Christian brothers, you know. But what appealed to them, me, is their devotion to it. I'm like, man. It's that zeal, right? Exactly. Yes. He's my brother and all that. We're going to sit down. We might argue a few things, you know, like, you know. But at the end of the day, we're going to hug. He better shake hands. He better hug me and he better share these tacos and these chips with me. (laughs) Exactly, bro. Exactly. (laughs) Hey, so the last question, man, is coming to you from... Monique Martinez, and she's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. I'm sorry, not, not Nevada. Las Vegas, New Mexico. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, her question is this here. When you were first being turned on to Catholicism, what was something you struggled to accept or believe, and how did you come to accept it? Confession. Okay. Confession. I, I, I couldn't see myself actually opening up to a, another man, another person human being with the title of a priest or a cura or a father and he could absolve my sins I I, I couldn't accept that I was having this conversation the other day I I, I find it interesting right to say the least to immediately after Jesus resurrection immediately the first interaction he's having with, with the apostles when they're gathered Right. right, 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 right. They're gathered in for fear of the Jews, right? Right. The very first thing he does is peace be with you. He breathes the Holy Spirit on them. Now keep in mind, this is 50 days before Pentecost, right? Yes. All right, yeah, yeah, 50 days before yes. Pentecost. So there's a distinction there because they're receiving the Holy Spirit 50 days before anybody else is receiving the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Um, so there's that distinction and he says go forth you know as my father has you know sent me I now send you exactly and whose ever sins you forgive are forgiven and whose ever sins you retain are retained thank you right yeah. so it's kind of like you know it's not to me when we ask you know who is the priest to forgive me for my sins I think that's the wrong question I think the, the right question is who am I to deny that authority that Jesus has bestowed on them? You know, and if Jesus said it, if he said it, yeah. if he said it, I have to roll with that. I have to. I have to. Hey, well, hey, yes. Rudy, man. I'm so glad, bro, that we had this conversation. It's a blessing, man. And I know we live a couple of hours away from each other, bro, but, you know, I can't wait till we hook up next time, bro. Grab some grub. Oh, we're gonna go record get some grub. It, record that part two of that good news. <laughs> we're gonna go with Chico's crib okay. or Chico's studio and record uh, it over at Music and Focus, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I don't record nothing else anywhere except for Chico, man. Yeah. I got Chico's back, like Cairo Pratt. Okay. Nah. <laughs> I like that. Hey, but you know, thank you for being here, man. And, and I just wanna say, you know, congratulations on your family. Congratulations on your success with your business. And I'm just, you know, proud of you, man. I want to commend you, you know, on, you know, just kind of living out the gospel, bro. Living out the the faith. And, man, you know, before I split, dude, I just want to say a quick little little glory be, Hail Mary, and our Father, man. So glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that anybody who's listening be touched, man. For I split, man, I gotta say what's up. I always forget, man. I gotta say what's up and send a shout out to the sponsors, man. Yes. El Padrecito Ministries. Padrecito, man. You know what I'm saying? Mason. Hey, a separate mind. Yeah, yeah a separate mind. And that yeah. separate mind productions, my brother from Reach Architects. They, you know, they make this program possible, man. Uh, and I want to make sure I give them their props. And those guys, awesome, man. And uh, big shout out to, uh, I know you, I, one day, one day I want to, uh, I got to hug them, man. One day, John Levi, boy. Hey. With that real presence. Ooh. <laughs> I got to hey. meet him one day, man. Somehow, I don't know when, but i like, man, I got to take him out to eat and yeah, chop it up with a man. Well, John's that, gonna be on my program next yeah, week, man. Yeah, uh, John Lee, my big shout out to you, man. This is boy Bless One down here in Texas, man. You got a little, I got you a room, man. You need to come down here, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, man. What? Well, everybody, thank you for joining me today on the Cradle Catholic. Thank you, Rudy, for being here. And I hope y'all join me next week, man. Until then, have a blessed and a safe week. Stay healthy, y'all.